everyone, it's Alice here from Top Mark Science and today we will be looking at unbalanced forces. Throughout this video we will be exploring forces in balance and not in balance, force diagrams showing unbalanced forces and resulting motion when forces are balanced versus unbalanced. Let's get started. As you may have seen in some of my chemistry videos, balance is everywhere. Nature strives to achieve balance and will act to ensure it happens. Think about a game of Jenga. The tower blocks start off stable until you start to remove blocks, causing the tower to become unbalanced, resulting in the tower falling over and leaving a pile of blocks still on the ground. The forces have now re-established balance. Nature likes this. Balance means to have an even distribution of something. So we will be exploring the difference between balanced forces when objects are in a stable state and unbalanced forces. Take this apple for example. It always has the force of gravity acting on its mass, otherwise known as weight. But as it falls, air particles collide with it, causing air resistance. Let's say the apple weighs 50 newtons and air resistance is also 50 newtons. These forces are the same. They are balanced. But say you drop a melon, which is 100 newtons. The forces are no longer balanced. This can have an effect on how an object moves. It's motion. Take this cyclist, for example. Cycling with a th thrust force of 100 newtons, but only 10 newtons of air resistance. This imbalance results in an overall forward force and the cyclist speeding up, accelerating. But as the cyclist goes faster, more air hits them, so air resistance also increases, until thrust and air resistance are the same. They are balanced. So we can now say the cyclist is traveling at a constant speed. But let's say the cyclist puts their foot on the brake. The brake induces a greater force of friction, so the force acting against the cyclist increases and thrust decreases. And thrust decreases even more as the brake is held down for longer or more vigorously. So the cyclist decelerates. Pause the video here and for each scenario, determine whether the mode of transport is accelerating, decelerating or moving at a constant speed. If you finish, try the challenge. Let's see what you came up with then. This car has a greater thrust than air resistance, so it's accelerating. The difference in force is calculated by the large force take away the small force. In this case, 50 take away 10, which is 40 newtons. So the car is accelerating with a resultant force of 40 newtons. This plane is moving at a constant speed, we can see this because thrust and air resistance are in balance. We will know when something is in balance because the resultant force is zero newtons. This skateboarder is accelerating with a resultant force of 125 newtons. And this cyclist is decelerating by 195 newtons. What about this cyclist then? Well, this cyclist has zero newtons of thrust and zero newtons of drag. Only weight and reaction force are in play here. So the cyclist is stationary, staying still. Pause the video here and use what we've just gone through to draw force diagrams to show the following scenarios. If you need a reminder, you can watch the types of forces video in this playlist before proceeding. Let's go through our answers, marking pens at the ready. This rocket launching is accelerating, so the thrust force is overall larger than the air resistance, so I can show this using a larger arrow. This runner is running at a constant speed, so the air resistance and applied force are in balance, the same size. This bus is stationary, so no thrust or air resistance is necessary, only its weight and reaction force is drawn and should be equal in size. This challenge boat is sinking, 
therefore its weight is greater than the force of upthrust. Well done if you got some of these, even better if you labelled your diagrams, unlike me. If we are provided with numbers, we can calculate the resultant force, which as we have just seen is the difference in forces which determines an object's motion. Is the large force take away the small force? Pause the video here to calculate the resultant force for each tug of war. Show your working in case you need to go back and check. And if you finish, try the challenge. Let's see how we did with this activity. Marking pens ready. The tug of war on the left shows there is a greater force of 50 newtons on the right and only 10 newtons pulled to the left. So the team on the right will win with a resultant force of 40 newtons. The tug of war in the middle shows there is a greater force of 50 newtons on the left and only 40 newtons pulled to the right. So the team on the left will win with a resultant force of 10 newtons. And this final tug of war shows that there is a balance of forces. The difference between them is zero newtons. So the team will remain in tension but stationary until one team starts to pull with more force. Time for a challenge activity. On the screen is the progression of a skydive from jumping to landing. Your task is to draw force diagrams for each stage of the skydive. Remember, you do not need to draw it all, just the dots with force arrows will do. If you finish, try the challenge. Let's see how we got on. Annotate your answers when you need to. So initially, the skydiver, who has just jumped out of the plane, will have a weight greater than air resistance. So the resultant force acting down, and the, therefore the diver accelerates. As the diver speeds up, however, more air particles will collide with them, which increases the air resistance until the air resistance equals the force of weight. This results in the diver falling at a constant speed, and they will not get any faster from here. When the diver deploys the parachute, this increases the surface area, which drastically increases the air resistance and becomes a larger force than weight causing the skydiver to decelerate and slow down. This is very important. And finally, upon landing, the diver still has weight but has an equal and opposite reaction force, allowing the diver to be stationary on the ground. Phew! Time for our end of video quiz. Let's see how we all got on today. Question one. Forces that are not evenly distributed are said to be unbalanced. Nice work. Question two. If a train has 500 newtons of thrust and 200 newtons of air resistance, what is the motion of the train? Good job. Accelerating. Question three. What is the resultant force of the train in question two? Remember to do the big take away small number. So do two, 500 take away 200 to give you a resultant force of 300 newtons. Question four, true or false? If there is a resultant force of zero newtons, the object must be stationary because no forces are acting on it. This is false. It could be going at a constant speed. Also, other forces will be acting, such as weight and friction. And finally, question five. Why does a skydiver fall at a constant speed just before they deploy their parachute? At this point, their speed has resulted in air resistance being equal to their weight, so the forces are balanced. Pause the video here to rate your progress today. It's always useful to be as honest as possible. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more from Top Mark Science, you can like this video and subscribe to this channel. I'll see you next time.